This video is made possible by the support of CodeNotary.io, blockchain protected authenticity in your DevOps process. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be recording something just in case this mainframe computer on which we're showing this video today one day will stop working. What I'm talking about is that uh, I'm logged in right now on VMSP, an historical operating system uh, that was running in the early 80s and this is running on a real computer on a real IBM mainframe on a real IBM 4361 mainframe the 43 series or 4300 series of mainframes by IBM where you could say almost designed to run VM and uh, there's very few of those left uh, in the world that are still working and functioning and um, and this one day this computer may not be around anymore and so I thought that I record this video as long as it's still running so we get a little bit of a feeling for the performance get a feeling for how these machines were configured and can see how it used to be when we were when we were working on the real mainframes in the 80s on bipolar uh, mainframes um, uh, in the in the 80s and that's why i'm recording this video okay so before we go into um, working on the terminal and exploring this mainframe from the inside let's look at it from the outside this is the picture of actually this is the computer that we're running on right now this is the one so whatever i type in here uh, such as you know this will actually now be running be executed on this computer they just this just ran on this computer this is the actual machine <laughs> i keep repeating it because i'm just so fascinated by it that we still have access to a computer from the 80s uh, that is still running that's the i touch this computer i went there i i was um, it's it's not publicly accessible but uh, people who are running it gave me access to it and I was shown the computer and touched it um, and was shown around this computer and, and given the history of this computer by the man who is responsible for uh, managing it and uh, who's the administrator of this computer. The history of this particular mainframe here is that it was uh, owned by a small business owner in Sacramento, California and he and his son uh, just wrote some applications for their own business on this mainframe and they didn't want to pay the high price of uh, hardware maintenance to the IBM customer engineers and so they learned to maintain their own mainframe and they got the they got the um, the uh, licensing or how do you call it the the training by IBM to maintain computers and then they bought actually two of this computer here and in fact, there is a sister computer to this one in the same location. And so that they could use spare parts whenever this machine, when this machine was discontinued by IBM. And so they had two computers and uh, the old business owner and his son were maintaining this computer. And uh, I, I know their names. I don't want to say the names here. And I know they live in Sacramento, California. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm just impressed by what they did here. And so uh, when they got rid of this computer, another entity um, acquired it uh, for good money, and now it's running, and um, and I have access to this computer. Before we go and uh, explore some more, I also want to tell a little bit more about this line of computers. The IBM 4300 line of computers was first announced in 1979. And as I said, they were really meant to run either DOS VS, which is kind of the uh, mainframe operating system for smaller machines, or the interactive time sharing operating system called VMSP. Um, we all know that I have a mainframe in the cloud um, running VM370. And in fact, I can show it to you right now. If I just switch my terminal here, yeah, here it is. So. If you've seen many of my other videos or some of my other videos, you'll know that I'm running VM370 mainframe in the cloud for a couple hundred users. And so if you log in here, um, then uh, this is what we're running here. Now, of course, this is emulated on a Hercules emulator. It's not a real mainframe. And also the other difference why I'm mentioning it is this, that this is VM370. So this is the 
last 24-bit operating system that is in the public domain by IBM and it doesn't have a xedit editor so if you want to do xedit moshix uh, as you can see the, the xedit doesn't exist there was no file list okay um, many full screen applications didn't exist there was also um, many of the operating system facilities were kind of still kind of earlish uh, they worked but uh, many things um, also some hardware was not supported at all and then in uh, I think in 79 IBM or 1980 IBM announced VMSP and VMSP is much more than just the next version of VM 370 it's much more capable it has a full screen support for many utilities it's uh, it has dual CPU support which is kind of crucial for larger workloads and had a much better communication interface to the outside world and supported uh, many more newer mainframes than VM370 did. VM370 only ran, ran on S370 mainframes and didn't make use of any older, uh, any newer architectures, and whereas VMSP was made for newer mainframes and was also much easier to handle and more, more stable, had a better file system, etc. So um, if we log off here from VM370, one more thing I can show you is um, dial uh, CP watch and you can monitor the computer from here. My computer is slow uh, right now, my desktop is slow, not the connection because I'm backing up everything to a spare drive and so that's uh, what's slowing down things a little bit. But I could uh, see here whoever is logged in, I can see resource usage. So we have right now CPU busy 4%, uh, so 42 system calls per second. I can see how much of the um, how much paging there is, 294 pages per second. So, um, and this is emulated on a 4381, <laughs> right? Because why is that? Well, this is just a tag. It doesn't, it's just whatever Hercules pretends to be to the VM370 operating system. But it is significant because the VM and 4380, this mainframe kind of go hand in hand. It was the... Um, I want to say almost perfect machine to run VM and that's why uh, when I configured it I gave it the 4381 model just because it will look realistic now to on on um, today we're going to looking at the VM SP that runs on a Rian 4361 slightly smaller model than the 4381 so before we um, sorry before we look into again into VM SP let's look at the mainframe so uh, the 4300 announced in 1979, they were produced throughout 1992. Um, they, uh, IBM released many models of this mainframe and every new model was more, more, was more powerful. And uh, as you can see here, the first one announced in 1979 only had 8 megabytes of memory. It was the 4331. It was uh, about four times more four times faster than the IBM S370 model 115 which is kind of I think the smallest S370 and then the, uh, they also announced a 4341 very popular machine for running VM and for DOS um, that was uh, faster than this one and then in 1983 they announced, they announced 4361 uh, with up to 12 megabytes of RAM which was three times faster than this machine. So a good mass machine, and this machine was almost exclusively used for VM. And then they also announced 4381, which could run also MVS, as well as uh, DOS VS and uh, VM SP, and later on even VM XA. Uh, those could go up to 64 megabytes of RAM. And so 64 kind of tells you it has to be XA, because 24-bit computers could only address up to 16 megabytes of memory. So whenever you see a computer with much more, it probably means that it was a 31-bit operating system that was running on it. Uh, there was also 4321, uh, a very, very small mainframe. And, um, and so this is the one that I'm working on right now. There were Group 4 and 5 announced in 83, and the smaller Group 3, Model 3, announced in 84. Uh, these computers could auto start themselves so you could dial in by phone and start the machine so they were kind of meant to be in remote offices 
Um, these were also machines that were kind of perfect for running APL, the math uh, programming language. And it had, um, um, this machine was the first machine that had, um, that had um, floating point arithmetic um, and that was built into a small mainframe. So this had floating point, which was also great for kind of universities, many colleges, smaller colleges, universities were running 4361s. And then 4381s, on which I actually did some work back in the 80s, they were much larger machines. And so if you look at IBM 4381, it's physically, it looks completely different. So this would be a good example of an IBM 4381 here. They were different. They were tall machines. They um, required much more power. They required also an um, air conditioning, uh, like a data center room, whereas the 4361 uh, were much smaller. They could run in a normal office environment with normal office air condition. And so they were very, very popular. And that's what we're running on today on this very machine here. This one has, I believe, 12 megabytes of RAM or eight. We're gonna find out very soon by using VMSP. So uh, let's switch to this connection here, uh, which is the 4361 that we're working on. So first let's go see the configuration of this machine. Um, yeah, so this actually had 12 megabytes of memory. As you can see here, 11.9 megabytes. Um, and uh, right now I'm the only user here. There is a batch utility here, the usual. Uh, by the way, also VMSP is the first version of VM that had the DER main, as you can see here, um, a system to create guest machines or guest users and provide uh, mini disks. So um, the comprehensive directory maintenance uh, software that first appeared with VMSP. And of course the operator is logged on and then I don't know who system is. I don't know what that is. And Smart is the monitoring software, which is running as a service machine here in the background. And uh, as you can see here, VMSP on a 4361. This is the serial number of this very machine. And today is September 28th, uh, two couple of days before the, um, uh, the Jewish New Year. And, um, and so this is the machine we're running on. Let's see now if we can find um, can find any other data about this machine, such as when was it IPL'd? So this was IPL just recently in September. Um, this is VMSP release five. IBM also produced a VMSP release six. That's very very hard to find. I saw a tape of VMSP release six in at IBM in in Europe just last week, and so I know where there is a tape of it. But of course. Um, I'm not allowed to um, to make a dump of that tape for posterity, but there are some tapes still out there. And this is service level 521, which I think means uh, 1985 was the last update to this patch to this operating system. So this was uh, generated, of course, um, in last year, um, because from the tape you have to generate your VM uh, SP image. And because VMSP still didn't have auto um, auto sensing of devices and stuff like that, so you had to generate it, and you also had to give it an I/O a map that uh, would map to the devices you had. So auto sensing came, I believe, with VMXA, but I could be wrong on that. So, um, what do we have on this machine? First of all, I have created some of my own um, of my own uh, little programs. So. Of course, we have file list, so that would be huge improvement for users, meaning that you have a, a full-screen um, file browser, as well as a full-screen editor. XEdit appeared for the first time with VMSP. So I have a little program here in PL1, probably, that I... Um, no, actually, this is in Fortran. So we have um, VS Fortran, uh, so which is a much better version than the Fortran we have as part of VM um, VM 370, because that would be a very, very old Fortran. This is a much newer Fortran, so that would be a paid product. Um, 
a, a product that IBM was selling for money, it wasn't a free product, and very good uh, compiler. And then there's a version, later version, VS2 Fortran, which is 31-bit, um, that was uh, even more capable than this one. But this is an optimizing compiler, very good compiler. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, oops, I changed something here, apparently. Yeah. Wait. Um, forgive me the response time. Again, this is not the mainframe, it's just my computer is a little bit slow. Mm. So, uh, we have PL1 compiler, obviously. Um, we have uh, COBOL compiler, RPG compiler, I believe, and um, and some other stuff. So uh, this, uh, all these compilers are present on this machine. So that's why I kind of like this machine. Let's see, um, COBOL. Yeah, this would be the, the old COBOL, the MFT COBOL compiler from 1978. But I think there's also, um, let me see here. Oops. Okay, so there is a COBOL S360, as well as the newer COBOL, VS COBOL maybe. Uh, COBOL VS. Not sure. I I believe I've seen the newer compiler. Uh, Gen COBOL. Not sure. Uh, maybe F COBOL. Oh, this would be for DOS VS. So, um, but there are several comp comp COBOL compilers. And then there is the PLE opt compiler, which, which for me is the most important part. So that's the optimizing compiler for VMSP. That's the PL1 compiler I first learned to program as a professional programmer in the 80s, although on MVS, but it's the same compiler. So what we do to right now is just try to compile uh, stuff with PLE opt, with the uh, PL1 optimizing compiler that I love so much. So why don't we do uh, uh, test PLE a. Oh, I already have something here. <laughs> I forgot that I wrote something in in, uh, in July. So it's just a very simple um, PL1 program. As you know, uh, column one cannot be used in PL1 because um, that's for punch cards use. And um, and then there's just a little program that does nothing, just returns zero. Uh, defines a, by a variable and returns it. And usually the optimizer compiler would, in seeing that we are defining a variable which we never use, would even skip the definition itself. So um, it would just it would just uh, have basically this is the equivalent of an IABR14. So uh, sets up the registers, goes in, and comes out again. So let's see if what we can get out of this compiler. So plea opt test, um, and we put in. Um, List statement nest. It's ref. Okay, so this compiled, no messages uh, produced. So let's see what came out. We should see a listing. Here it is. Oh, rather than like this, let's just look at it in raw mode. Okay, so this is the PL1 optimizing compiler. Um, it doesn't say when it was built. But um, this must be around 81, 82 compiler. Uh, there were several releases of the same compiler, and I, they, the um, the optimizer the optimizer became substantially better over time. Uh, had PL1 support, obviously. So we can see here now the the assembler that was generated, and so. It does. It doesn't do much other than setting up an environment. And let's see if it. Uh, this is for the C sec. So just it's just a description of what it is. Then we save the registers. Um, uh, 
and uh, we set up the the stack of registers and uh, and then we load the registers back with our return code zero and jump back to where we came from so um, yeah so yeah so the, the, there is there's way more um, instructions than IEB or 14 of of course because IEB 14 is maybe only eight or nine instructions but um, the, the the compiler here also has to set up a simple um, the simple environment so that it can handle it um, it can be called by other programs etc but this is the assembly that's generated and uh, yeah so this is very interesting and you can kind of see this is how we used to work back then we just had uh, 3270 uh, usually I would uh, back in those days I had the real terminal but now it's just emulated by this program but that's it and then you could load it and run if you have the libraries defined um, so that's it so um, as you can see uh, the machine is quite fast if I do again uh, remove test listing oh, I mean I'm in uh, yeah, Unix mode. Erase test listing A. Okay. We can just run it again. Test uh, list produce nesting statement xref. That's it. Quite fast. So um, on a machine with maybe one other user. Let's see how many users we have here. Yeah, it's I'm the only interactive user right now here other than the operator and so uh, this was uh, considered a very good response time and a machine like that the 4361 could have maybe up to um, I want to say 50 60 users tops and uh, that's as, as probably as many as you could cram into it at colleges universities we would maybe have up to 150 to 100 because only maybe you know 20 30 at a time would be would be spending time on the on the terminal itself uh, this machine could, of course, also still run batch, and um, and the other thing to consider is that um, the uh, students back then were limited in time. You couldn't just sit eight hours and turn in front of a terminal. The, sometimes there was a line of people, and so um, uh, the only thing that would probably hog a machine like that at a college would have been that a lot of people were playing games. So let's see if we have any games here. Um, Let's see what disks I have. Oh, let's first of all let's query all the DASTIs. Let's see how many DASTIs are present on this machine. So, one, two, three, four. There's only five um, DASTIs here. The 3380s, of course. 3390s did not exist yet. Um, but I don't see Q. Yeah, I don't see the all the. Um, yeah anyway so um, I don't know exactly how many DASs are defined to this machine there's maybe a way to see it but uh, I don't I don't really know uh, smart yeah I can't see that easily from here because I'm not a super user I'm not a privileged user in this machine but um, but I'm sure there's at least two or three DASTIs that are attached to this machine uh, but we have this four drives here mini disk so let's see what's in in D oh okay so we just found some games which probably the same games that I also installed on my VM370 mainframe um, I have the exact same uh, games so we can see what there is and choose one the uh, rotate sub hunt I don't know eight ball let's try eight ball it is decidedly so <laughs> I don't know what that is 
outlook not so good <laughs> so yeah it's a it's a fake forecasting tool uh or a pro a game and uh formula one i saw a map of the circuit yes oh, okay so this is for us to race here uh interesting do you require full details no Perhaps you will be asked to give details about gear brake, accelerator, uh, enter, flag dropped, you're off. Tier one. Oh, this one. This one crashed. I'm not sure. It dumps the registers. I'm not sure. So um, you can see here, having fun on a computer like this, and it runs fine. Uh, let's see what other disks we have. L S. Okay, here will be libraries, and CMS itself is stored here. Yeah. Okay, so we have the tape utilities, and um, I saw that we have a TSO library, so we could even write some TSO programs in assembler and let's see what else we have one okay all right so we have some programs here compilers uh, this is the cobalt compiler we saw before with its library and fourth oh we have a fourth compiler fortran g fortran h fort okay so this is fortran VS2 that I had been talking about before. We even have the GCC C compiler. And this is the PL1 optimizing compiler. I recognize it. Oh, we have Pascal as well. Amazing. Snowball. This is all PL1. As you can see PL1 compiler is a big compiler. It has over 110 passes, by the way. The PL1 optimizing compiler passes over the source code 100, up to 110 times to create the uh, the object module. We have some other game here, I think. Math, I don't know what that is. Looks like a library of some sort. Optimize, fun stuff. PLCT, I'm not, PL optimizing compiler. Uh, run, Parm, Snowball compiler. Lots of fun stuff. VS FS2 Fortran, Link Load, Watford um, Fortran, that's the University of Waterloo Fortran, and X Edit and World. So there's a lot of uh, Yahtzee, some games. Yeah, so a um, lot, of, lot of stuff installed on this machine. And let's see how my profile looks like. Nothing special here. Okay, that was given to me by the system administrator. And that's about it. So I have this top tool to see what's running on the system. And, um, and this kind of gives you also a good, a good uh, understanding of the performance. Uh, if somebody was, was logged in, I could just say uh, message operator hello from Mojix. Right, but I'm not going to bother him now, and um, and that's it. Um, so full screen utilities, Dermain was there. Uh, you have the much better RSCS. You have channel to channel um, coupling facility support, VTAM, and I think uh, VMSP six even had RecF um, available for it. The newer compilers and uh, support for up to two CPUs for VMSP. And this machine is an absolute delight. As you can see, I, I enjoy working on it because I'm working on a real mainframe here. And, uh, and it's not a ZPDT, it's not an Hercules machine, it's a real mainframe. And of course, I also work on real mainframes at the University of Leipzig, for instance, and other real mainframes I have access to, but those are modern machines. This, you know, all the fun is with the older machines, with uh, knowing that we're working on this computer right now. It's just uh, 
with the, all the scratches and all the age it shows for me this is just uh, it's just pure joy and i thought i'd make a video out of it and show you that all this is possible and uh, and some machines are still running so we, we're blessed to live in a time where we still have access to these machines i'm sure 20 30 years from now uh, there may not be any of this left uh, maybe one or two if your museum uh, still keeps it up but otherwise we're uh, we're going to still have access to this video, hopefully. So, um, just just a little a little fun video for all of us to share and to remember um, to have as uh, as, uh, as as a, as a memento of uh, what these machines were capable of in real time. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like this particular video, I would appreciate the thumbs up button. Please drop me your comments, what you think of these machines, what you like about it, any questions you may have. I can maybe do a follow-up video if you want to show it, if you want me to show anything particular from this machine. And otherwise, uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.